here. Obvious, we got a problem here. And it's more than just Alvin streaming Punisher. When life begins to suck, who's reporting it? Luckily, you got two friends who you won't forget. Coming live, Alvin and friend on survival. Laughing nonstop, case drops on a cycle. Thought has been intrusive, thoughts off an iPhone. How they make the world seem bright with the lights off? AFs, it might as well stay up. Lies being told like that dinosaur BS. Magnifying glass to the ground if they don't see us. Having the time, roasting your favorite pizza. Bougie ain't an option, it's the way. Take it to the grave, add poop into the place. You already know when they take the case. Laugh the pain away, it's affirmative murder. Hello and welcome to another episode of Affirmative Murder, the Equal Opportunity True Crime Comedy Podcast. I'm Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans. <laughs> Oh, 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 wrong board, wrong board. Oh, yes, yeah, right a minute, Mr. Postman. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm the mailman, can't you tell, man? Gonna post it. I salvaged it, friend, hello. You really did. Don't try to don't try to throw some horns in there. To no, I did it. I, I was building it up. I did it on purpose to, right. to add some suspense to it this time. How you, how you fuck up my intro? That's, come on. Come my on, apologies, dog. man. How you doing, oh, man. man? I'm not doing well today, man. Um, I think the, um. The time shift is thrown off my uh, my energy. Yeah, so I texted I I you at know. like a one o'clock. You were like, "I just woke up, man." Yeah, man. I, just. <laughs> like, I was like, "It's only an hour." <laughs> I was. It still threw me off. I was like, "I'm at like br- breakfast right now." <laughs> it's like it's like eleven o'clock. You're like, Yo, "I just woke up just now." My I just bad. Bro, <laughs> I just like I think um. It's, like it's quarter to one. Was, yeah, because uh, I usually don't, on my off days, I usually wake up. That's when I wake up the earliest. Right. Like, I don't know, I, on my off days. And then, like, we had, we put some blankets up on the windows. And it was like, it's Why? just dark. It's just dark. I don't know. I don't, it's just dark. Just keep everywhere. the light out? Keep the light out. And we just, we all slept until, we all woke up at the same time. So we all slept until, like, 11, 30, 12 o'clock. Were y'all clubbing so last some night? We Kids did get home at like clubbing? till like one thirty. Yeah, we was up. We was up watching. We got home and we was up watching the floor. We watched that until like one thirty. All of us. Well, all hey, of us watched. What did it. I say? <laughs> what did we, I say? We watched that till like one thirty. Is so. it not amazing? Yeah, we, we can say that for later because I do sure. want to get into it. Yeah, but we, that's, you know, but, we can go deep, yeah, but, but uh, we can get deep yeah. later. We'll, yeah, we'll save that yeah. for after. Um. So we was doing that. So we all didn't go to sleep till like one thirty. That's late. That's super late for the kids. So yeah, man, we all just kind of just slept in and then. Woke up and then I just feeling just been feeling off. Just oh, I, I, it's the time, bro. It's just like no, I get you. Lo- losing an hour never feels good. Yeah. I like gaining yeah. an hour. I never like losing exactly. an hour. Losing an hour yeah. make you a little curmudgeony. Yeah, man, well, for sure. Well, so. I have uh, something that might cheer you up a little bit. Might be a little okay. fun thing. You know, get our creative juices flowing. A couple of years ago, we haven't done this in some time, but it was one of the more yeah. fun times that we had on this podcast for me personally, anyway. Um, the Oscars are tonight. Now, people are listening to this. This is days after the Oscar, but if you listen to it on Patreon, it's only a day after the Oscar, so it's still pretty fresh. Um, while we're recording this, the Oscars are tonight. So I would thought it would be fun to read you some of the nominees for Best Picture, which I'm pretty confident you've seen none of these movies, um, and then let your brain just kind of give a synopsis of what you think this movie is based on the title. Oh, great. Would you be willing to play that game with me uh, one more time? No, but sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who are new here, um, this was a few years ago. The year Jojo Rabbit came out, um, Parasite, 1917, some of the most amazing uh, synopses for movies I've ever heard in my life came from this man. He'd never seen Jojo Rabbit and gave a full, I think he said it was like a cartoon. Jojo's the cartoon, but everybody else is real, and it's kind of like 8 Mile. Uh, to my to the best of my recollection, but it, either way, it was amazing uh, storytelling. So, friend, are you uh, ready to kick this off? Sure, man. I'm gonna go. Maybe I'm not that. gonna. I'm only gonna do like the the big ones. Okay. The ones that are really you know really getting a lot of buzz. So right. uh, up first, an easy one. I don't think you've seen it, but I think you can you could probably guess, or I'd love to hear what you think it's about. Barbie. Okay. I I would assume it's like uh, the lady who is in Joe Dirt plays Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? Is that not the oh, same person? No, listen. Uh, Margot Robbie does look like uh, eight people, including one. <laughs> That's not her. That's not, no, really? Not, wow. But no, but I see. No, but friend, listen. I love. I love doing. I love. I see. The, I see. <laughs> I see why you would think that. I get the, I get it. 
the lady from Joe Dirt and Margot Robbie are not one and the same, but there are several Hollywood actresses that favor Margot Robbie. They all have a I similar vibe. Her. So already off to a great start. You got. I said there was confidence. That's you sure that's not her. <laughs> Who was the girl playing Joe Dirt? I don't know her name off the top of my head, but that's a she was the, I love that movie. She was the girl who was in White Chicks. She was one of the White Chicks and White Chicks who was in the dancing uh, battle. Uh, I don't, I don't it's know. not Margot Robbie is the point, but you got to I wow. mean, okay, so okay. the lady from Joe Dirt. And I'm sorry I even interrupted you. So the lady from Joe Dirt is... is I thought what, that was her. Okay, she's playing Barbie, and then what? I, uh, so the lady from Joe Dirt plays as Barbie, and... From what I think how this movie goes is like, it's kind of like, it reminds me of um, Beauty and the Beast. Okay. Type thing where it's like, she's living this Barbie life, which is everything is all fictional. And then like, she got to kiss. Uh, what is his name? What um, is his name? The the, the alternate the male, to Barbie. The male, yeah, the male Barbie. Which who, would uh, be called. Ken. A, there you go. Ken. She kissed Ken and then everything's everything turns real realistic and they're no longer barbies anymore they're actually human beings okay that's what i think the movie goes and and it ends happily or sad it's happily live a happy you know happy ever after happy ever after yeah got it okay okay so barbie starring that's not that's not the lady <laughs> i'm i'm baffled okay <laughs> all right so up next we got killers of the flower moon okay hmm who's the lead actress Leonardo DiCaprio. Ooh, okay, it's my guy. Um, what the title reminds me of, uh, bee movie. This is movie is 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 around bees and and uh, this is a kid. This is a kids movie. Uh huh. Right. So it starts off happy. You know, it shows the working life, just like the bees, working life of bees. Um, except this one doesn't have Jerry Seinfeld in it. I know that's. I know he's. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I know he's the voice in that movie. Uh huh. Yes. And, and B movie. And, and and B movie. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what was it? Killer of the Flower Moon. What Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah. So this is the life of some bees, right? And mm-hmm. um, it's your life of some bees. And there's a teaching moment in this where uh, he has a son. Is this how the B movie go? Am I just? <laughs> Are you just giving the the premise? Am of I B-movie? just giving the? I don't remember. Yeah, what I I, just, I think B movie is a rom right com. I think Jerry Seinfeld falls in love with a human. Okay, okay. as a B. Okay, I'm on. A, I'm on the right track. Then here mm-hmm. we go. So it's a B movie, and there's a lesson in this movie where he teaches his son about the working class oh. and how uh, things are not given to you in life that you got to work hard for it. But this B wants to uh, go on a venture, right? Uh huh. So he doesn't want to do the work in life. He wants to. He wants to see what's beyond, you know, flowers and you know, just his natural habitat. Of course. So he chooses to build a some type of technology, some type of bee technology. Very smart bee. Right? Sure. A genius. A genius. Um, and he wants to take a trip to outer space. Oh. To see what life is beyond where he's from. Right? Yeah. Man, do we you, you wanna go on this thing? Cause I can take this. <laughs> I'm on I'm strapped in. You, <laughs> I can take this. I'm strapped yeah, I'm strapped you, in. Okay. You stra- okay, we in for so the So this is like a go. this is like an epic, like a three hour movie. This is like, like a Lord this of the Rings. Is like, this is like no, this is like I'm just saying um, lengthwise, it seems like we're getting big. Lengthwise, yeah. This is like um Avatar. Avatar Multi type. multiple films. It's like yes. a whole okay, got it. This, this is, is a part billion one. dollar movie. So this yes. is Killers of the Flower Moon part one. Killers of the Flower Moon, right? Mm-hmm. So where I left, I left off, he wants to take a trip to the moon? Yeah, okay, he wants or to take space. a trip to the moon, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Space. So he went to space. And um, he finally gets the technology to get there. So he's he's there in space, right? Yeah. So now he meets a, a friend who is a bee, but a bee in outer space, so it's a different type of creature. But they're from the same family, like you got know, it. cats, they got, and tigers, right. and lions. And Similar shit. but different. Right. The genetics is all the same. Got it. But the, the outer features are, is, is a bit different. What happens is his technology fails, so he can't really stay up. He can't really stay up in outer space too long. Uh huh. So his friend goes, "Okay, cool. I'll come back down with you." So he comes back down. So you got B and you got outer uh, outer space B. Outer space B. Come down brings this creature with him, right? Uh huh. 
Well, the cousin, or they got another creature. The, the, the cousin, got the cousin with him. But this was all a, this was all his plan from the cousin, right? Uh huh. So he brings the cousin back down. So the cousin, the cousin, has his chip, where he can, where he keep all his other, all his other buddies in his pocket, right? Right. So if he hit this chip, they 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 come out all his all his buddies. Oh, so he wow. does that, right? Uh huh. Takes over the whole bee empire that's here on Earth. Right, right. Kills all the killer bees. This dude, the killer bees can't touch the ass. It's a slaughter. Uh, out of space bee. So he befriended him, him as a trick, and then came and betrayed him. And he's a space invader bee. Space invader bee. But they can come. But all these bees, all his buddies, can come together to one like a big old. I don't know, like a like a transformer type. Got it. So now he's huge. But now he got a bigger plan than taking over the bees. He's trying to take over the whole world. So now he's he's grown to this hundred foot. Tall B that's now taking over the world and start killing people, slaughtering people, just, you know, shooting stings, all kinds of people, and just it just murders everybody and takes over the world. That's how that goes. And that's Kill in the, the part one. Because this is this is yeah. this is at least what? Two movies? Oh, yeah. At least four movies. Wow. Wow. Yeah. A quadrilogy. Yeah. Okay, wow. Okay. Killers of the Flower Moon. I love yeah. that. I would go see that for sure. It's almost it's, it's giving Dune. It's giving Dune. Yeah. I love it. Okay, um, up we got two more, and we're gonna move on. What we got next? Oh, uh, we got Oppenheimer. <sighs> Oppenheimer. This sounds like a movie of. You know what? Let's skip that because I might see some. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's skip. you don't you don't want to get wanna, canceled? Uh, yeah. I okay. Say, All right. I don't even. Hey, man, we're gonna leave it. I don't even want to. I don't even want to explore why you think why you're nervous. Okay, we'll move on. Um. Well, I was about to say something all oh, yeah, the way. Yeah, skip that. Hey, man, that's cool. Let's skip that. We don't even have to go any further. You know into what? It. That's behind the scenes. Join the Patreon if you want to hear that. <laughs> We're going to put that behind a paywall because <laughs> friends <laughs> make me nervous. Paywall. I don't, And I don't even want to know why you are hesitant, Why what Oppenheimer did to you to make you go there. I'll put that there. behind the paywall okay. if you want to hear that one. We're going to go lastly, Let's go to the last yeah. one, Poor Things. Poor Things. Hmm. So this is about a, um, this is about a guy who has... Beautiful family, you know, life is perfect, you know. Yeah. Got the big family, big house, white picket fence. Yeah. And, American um, dream. Is it America? I'm sorry, I don't want to presume. Sorry. Sure, yeah. Sure. And um everything's going fine and the wife gets cancer, right? Wife gets brain cancer. And, you know, now he has all these family these 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 uh these obstacles that they have to deal with. You know, uh-huh. medical bills, stuff like that. Wife has cancer. I go through all the treatments and stuff. Sure. So the wife dies, right? Wow. And, you know, they, they move on. You know, they also have two kids, right? Then they hit the lotto, right? They hit the lotto a couple, couple years after the wife died. Sure. Hit the lotto for $500 million. That's a lot right? of money, yeah. A lot of money. They sell the house. They move to let's say this this takes place on the East Coast. They move to the West Coast. They move to California. They buy a big mansion out there. Husband remarries, right? Mm-hmm. This wife, new wife, stepmom wife, gets cancer. Huh. Right. And she gets brain cancer as well. Now, you know. The family of this wife goes like, this last wife, you know, get brain cancer as well. They go, yeah, but you know, it's just just coincidence. Mm-hmm. They're just whispering, wife, whispering to each other. It's it's this it's wife. it's odd. Yeah, this wife dies. His second wife dies. Uh-huh. A couple years later, hits the lotto again. Right. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. This time he hits the lotto for two hundred fifty mil. Then he goes, okay, we gotta we we move we move. Then they move to 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 England, right? Uh huh. So they go across across the pond, yeah, right? over the water. Oh, and then he remarries. Uh huh. So the kids are like the kids are getting older. They're like, all right, what's well, third stepmom, second stepmom? Okay, we 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 moving. But out, we're right? up th- we're up three quarters of a billion dollars. Yeah. So they the kids the kids dip. They move on to that. They do their own thing. Right. right. The third wife gets cancer. Now okay. the kids are like, all right, man, what's what is happening? Yeah. What's going on? Right. So let's 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 rewind it. Right. This is the part where it's like flashback. Backstory comes in. Flashback. Got it. So this this guy grew up grew up, 
poor as a child didn't have nothing right mm-hmm. and then this is this is like new age type thing right so he dabbled in on some he used to be back in his day he used to do some some online gaming right uh-huh got caught up on a got caught up with some other guy who goes hey man you ever thought about being rich and he goes yeah man i love school you know i grew up with nothing right so he goes but you got to sacrifice some wives to hit millions of dollars. And he goes, as a child, he goes, oh, I wouldn't do that. But he didn't know this. Is, he forgot all about this. But he did this years ago. Right. It's like this virtual agreement that he. I mean, he made the deal, but didn't he, think anything of it. And then, right. So he got older. This was, he did this when he was a kid. Right. But come to find out that guy that he met was the devil, right? Mm. So he came back on him. And stealing and taking his, his wives. After his first wife. That didn't have nothing to do with the agreement he made. That just that just happened. It just that just happened. The devil guy came back with, like, "Hey man, you remember that agreement we made when you was a child?" He said, "Yeah, but you know, I thought, I thought that was just a game." He said, "No, nah, this is for real." And here's the I'm gonna money. take all this. I'm gonna take all this money that you won. This five hundred mil we took that. But you want you want this back? I'm gonna need some sacrifices. So he got married two more times so he can he can he fulfill can the fulfill dollars. the deal. Fulfill the deal. Mm, I'm, this is very Black Mirror. That's, that's how I go, yeah. This is very Black that, Mirror. I, I mean, that's why I left off. I haven't finished. There's still some to be continued. Okay, yeah. But that's... That but one, that's that one, wow. I, I'm still... That was a good one, man. Yeah, that know. was, I man. To, I, you might need to be the director. <laughs> you might need to, to write, write, write the next down. season of Black Mirror. That was that was tantalizing. I'm into that. That was off the dome. No, that, 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 yeah, that, was, that, was, that was acapella. So I could only imagine what you do with some time. I'm at the... I jot that one down. Yeah, you freestyled that? That's damn. That was yeah. all. Yeah, shit. Um, I still, hey, we're going to move. What was that? Poor Things? Poor Things. Oh, that's a perfect title. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, hmm. we're going to move on. I don't really want to, the Oppenheimer. You want to hit Oppenheimer one? Or what? You want you want to go into it? Or? No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> we're going to put that behind the paywall. We're gonna, <laughs> he made me really, he's like, you know what, man, never mind. I don't even want to go there. I was like, you know what, hey, man, say no more. Hey, folks, listen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fran and I are very excited to announce we got another live show coming up. Before I get into the details, friend, yes. talk to the people. You know, how are you feeling about this? This is this is big news, man. This, hey, this is a, a dream come true, man. We doing number one. It was like, man, this is awesome. It was, and it was, on, it was on home turf. Home turf. This one, we're shooting across. We going number two? We're going, we to going the, deuce? we're going to the other side of the coast. On to Portland, cuz. We will be going to Portland, Oregon on May 4th, 2024. Um, we would love to see you at the Growler Guys. I believe it's a bar at 6.30 p.m. on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. You know, friend, this is like a Star Wars thing. There will be no nice. Star Wars references or motifs or anything like that of the sort. So don't come expecting that or you can leave. Don't come with a lightsaber. Or, no, you can come with your fanfare. I'm just joking. But it's, it just is a coincidence. We didn't pick May 4th because we're like big Star Wars heads, Wars heads or anything like that. But we are super excited to be going to Portland, Oregon on May 4th, 2024. Um, tickets are available right now. The tickets are selling pr- really quickly. I'm, they're, even, they're selling even quicker than the first show. So I'm super excited. Super really? happy. Get your tickets as soon as possible. This is going to be a fun time. We're super excited to go to Portland for the first time. Fran, yes? Yeah. Me as well. Um, yeah. It's going to be a fun time. We're going to be um, laughing, telling some wild stories. Madison McGee will be joining us once again. The, the amazing Madison McGee. Uh, we will be uh, joining forces like Voltron and uh, trying to put on a good show for you guys for the second time. Um, super excited. Again, tickets are on sale now. Get them while they're hot. It's pulling a diverse city, I would have Yeah, hoped. man. Is Portland's okay, like, Portland's okay. like very... in my mind anyway. I haven't been there. But it's like uh, Brooklyn and... Like steampunk Brooklyn, you know, like it's, I feel like okay. it's a lot of, I don't know why I put a D on in the Brooklyn, but it's like steampunk Brooklyn, like a lot of edgy, edgier okay. Brooklyn, like more What's leather, leather like? Brooklyn. You know what the weather like is out there? Is it? You know, um, well, it's like, it's, rainy? it's the Pacific Northwest. So I would imagine in the springtime, it would be really nice. Okay. Maybe, maybe a little, I'm like, excited. Maybe like I'm rain, excited. sun, like kind of thing, like that kind of thing, rain, and then bringing beautiful, sunny, cloudy, partly cloudy, sunny days, something like that. I'm excited. We'll find man. out, won't we? Yeah. May fourth again, guys. Uh, the link's available on our Instagram. The link will be available in the story. Infor- I mean, in the um, episode information. Um, you can click on the link on there and purchase a ticket if you would like to. And again, we'd love to see you in Portland. If you're out that way, neary that neck of the woods, we'd love to see you at the show on May fourth, twenty twenty four. 
But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to get into some fucked up shit. So stick around. Ice Cold Case is the podcast looking into the unsolved murder of J.C. McGee 21 years ago in Belmont County. Why is she come out of clear blue and starting to ask questions about this? What's going on here? It's weird. It's strange. Yeah, I never thought of him as a suspect. We have done nothing to cover this up. Records were all accidentally destroyed in different ways. A lot of sick stuff was going on. Point blank shot him. There was a saying, you want to kill somebody, do it in Belmont County. I'm just so glad that you are not scared. It's really hard to establish any rapport at all with anybody. Man, y'all know I didn't do this, man. What the? Ice Cold Case, available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, and we are back, Fran, this week. Uh, I came across an interesting story that blew my mind. Um, and by came across, I mean, this is another one you sent me. I don't mean, I don't mean to not give yeah. you credit. You sent me this one. Yeah, Where did you find this to send it, uh, to send me, uh, the information about this? I found this on the oxygen website, man. I went on there. Shout out to oxygen. Like, yeah, it's went on there. What's, what's, what's going, what's going on on here? Yeah. Man? What's going on? That, that popped up and I was like, all right. Yeah. Let's, let's look into this. Intriguing whole, for sure. Yeah. It's a whole, you know. The article, you know, the article don't they don't they don't give out too much. It's like go watch the show, They're right? Like, we will give you a little bit of little sample size, and it's like you want the rest, you need to go watch. Draw the show. you, you in just to, enough. Subscribe or something, yeah, to make you want to go, go watch, watch the, the show. show. Yeah. So I went and found. I went on YouTube, and then they had, I was like, oh, I got it on YouTube. But again, it's on an Oxygen Profile channel, so it was like four minutes. I was like, oh, they trying to get over the sample again. You want the rest? Yeah. Go, go to the, the. I said, all right. I was like, but I got YouTube TV, mm. which has the Oxygen channel. Which has on demand oxygen. I said, "Oh nah," I got around. I got around it, and I found a whole episode, which is like forty five minutes long. Got everything I need. Now, I've been meaning to call you out about this because you asked. You told me that you found this on YouTube TV, something yeah. I don't have. Um, yeah. So, I'm here to judge you. Which with okay. why do you? Why are you paying for that? Why I'm paying for YouTube TV? Yeah. Why because are you paying my, for that's, that? That's my. That's my. That's how I watch TV. Oh, they have live TV. Oh, they have live TV. Yes, they have live TV. What are you, what are you, why are you coming at me? Oh, okay. Do you have Hulu too? I don't have. I don't have like Comcast. I don't have that. Do you have Hulu? I do have Hulu. Mm, see, I do, but Hulu's, I don't have live TV Hulu. Huh? I don't have Hulu. Oh, live you TV. have the package that I without the live TV. Because, yeah, because I have Disney and I have um, whatever else it comes with. It comes mm. with my Verizon plan, so I got the package of, and I have ESPN uh, Plus, whatever it is. Got it. Oh, it comes with the. Oh, comes, so apologize. Yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. I, yeah, okay. okay. I thought you were. I thought you were hoarding hoarding subscriptions. I'm not like you, man. I don't need Hulu Live TV and YouTube TV. I don't need I don't both of those. I mean, like I'm missing out on. Some, I do have I'm YouTube Premium, but you have you have Paramount, you have Apple TV, you have Apple Plus, you have Netflix, which went up. I have Shutter, a couple of extra dollars. I have Disney. You have Plus. Shutter. You have you have Disney. I have Plus. I mean, like you have. Yeah, you have. Why? <laughs> why you probably have uh what's what's the other one? T T Mood. I mean, not T Mood. What's the other Tubi? one? Tubi. Tubi, you probably have Tubi. I, uh, I, you definitely have Tubi. I, well, you had. I it. had it. I downloaded Tubi because I was okay. featured in a documentary on Tubi. Yeah, you and don't need. You don't. You don't need all that. I hear you, but let me ask you this: How else am I supposed to watch Baddies West? I don't, I don't give a fuck about your mama. I put that on my cell. Anyway, this is the story this week. I'm sorry to get off track. Um, this week that we're telling the story of Daniel Yarbrough. Very, very tragic story, but also wild, a wild, wild story. So let's get into it. Uh, Daniel Yarbrough was an Army specialist living in Apple Valley, California, which is like very small town, rural California, um, like an Army town. A lot of military Mm -hmm. people and presence and, you know, active military people living in that part of California. Uh, uh, Daniel was living there in 2014. He had been serving with the National Guard in Barstow at Fort Irwin for three years and was doing very well for himself at 31 years old. So he, he, he'd always wanted to be in the military, and at 28 years old, he enlisted in the National Guard and kind of found his footing 
he kind of lived a wayward life for a little bit and was kind of lost. But the National Guard, he found family and friends and roommates and all these things. And um, he, so he had been in the National Guard for about three years. On September 29th, 2014, Daniel got a text from a friend inviting him over to their house for a group Bible study session. Yeah. Which is an interesting way to spend a, like a Friday night, but I'm not here to judge. Uh, yeah, I mean, Daniel at the time was going through like some yes. personal things and then a, f- a friend of his was like, you know, hey man, going through some things, come over. Come kick it with my, fam- with, with my friends and my family. Friends and my family, is, I mean, Bible study, you know, kind of get your spirits up. Right. But at around 9.30 p.m., Daniel Yarbrough was shot dead in the driveway of the home. Detectives arrived on... Detectives arrived on the scene to find Daniel dead in the driver's seat of his white Volkswagen Jetta. The weapon used in the shooting would eventually be identified as a 20-gauge shotgun. It, yeah. it left a hole in his car through him. It was a gruesome scene. You know, randomly, I saw this video of this guy. You know, I'm going to talk. There was a guy. <laughs> For now, until they, I think the government's talking about just, disbanding it in the, from the country or something. But anyway, you're on the top. As they, sh- as they should. But like, <laughs> that's another it sucks. You, another day. you look at that thing and all of a sudden it's 11 <laughs> o'clock at night. Like the sun is <laughs> out. Your day is just gone. It's a, it it's a terrible, bad, it's, it's, it's going to kill us. It should be bad. Yeah, it's a, it's anyway. a, it's a terroristic weapon. Uh, yes. For sure. There's a guy who was on it that popped up who like got shot in the face by a, shot, what, by a shotgun. Oh, wow. And was like. And was TikToking? Yeah, and like his shit's, I mean, his shit's off. Does he do like dances and stuff? Front, or he's just front, from, no, it's oh, like, okay. he, it was the interview. Oh, it was like, a, it. he said the front of his brains is gone and his head, his head's all crazy looking. But I mean, like, he said that they told him, and the, the reason why he survived, he said, the reason why you survived is because you you got shot at point blank range. He said, if you, if they would have shot you from a couple feet back, it would have blew you, it would have, it would have blew your head off. Like, your shit would have been down. So street. it didn't have a chance to do but like shotgun stuff. It didn't have, it didn't have to Spread. do. It didn't have a chance to do his his full potential of the shotgun blast. It was just point blank range, and that's how he survived. I said that's crazy. So it does because because shotguns buckshot, and they, they spread buckshot. out, and that's they the spr- chaos. Exactly. So from yeah. up close, it just it couldn't even buckshot to do. That's crazy. That's he survived because yeah. the shotgun couldn't do what it's supposed to do. Right. Damn. <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah, I don't even know how to respond. That's crazy. That's a crazy like reason to, 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 for them to tell you. Like you're you're alive because of how I know you're like damn they shot you with a shotgun from right in your face. Yeah. It's like well if they would have shot you from further away, you'd be gone. You wouldn't. I even, wouldn't be. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you'd yeah, be you in pieces. You know, damn. Daniel had apparently been standing outside of his car when he was shot from no more than ten or fifteen feet away. Mm-hmm. Daniel attempted to crawl into his vehicle after being shot, but had eventually succumbed to his injuries shortly after. He was identified at the scene by a fellow Fort Irwin soldier named Wesley Swank, who was the sender of the Bible study invite text. Yep. Investigators, motivated by the fact that an American soldier had been gunned down in a driveway, got to work immediately. You know, so this is a, a military town. You're, this is a soldier active, you know, in the National Guard. And so this looks terrible. And so the detectives, yeah. not that they didn't already have motivation because it's their job, but it it was a little extra incentive. Like we got to solve this, man. That we we can't have people thinking they can just gun down soldiers in the, in our in our city. So they got to work immediately, questioning friends that were at the Bible study and canvassing the neighborhood for witnesses. And they spoke to Yarbrough's close circle for possible leads as to who could have committed this crime. Detectives quickly discovered that Daniel Yarbrough's home, that he shared with his roommate named Ruben Vegas, had been vandalized. Uh, Somebody broke in, stole Ruben's laptop, some money, wrecked the place, and um, they were both pissed off. And Ruben, especially, uh, they they had started to come to, when they asked around, Ruben and Daniel, their neighbors were uh, alluding to the fact that they knew what was going on. It was like a lot of gang activity Mm -hmm. and that the the neighbors were kind of saying that they think a gang might have done this. So Ruben and Daniel ended ended up filing a police report. But according to Ruben, he told the police, like, hey, man. You better find this guy before we find him. However, not long after the home invasion, Yarbrough was involved in a drive-by shooting where bullets barely missed him while sitting in his car having some beers with Ruben. They were chilling in the car, playing some music, having some beers, and all of a sudden a car rides by and blasts shots into the car. Neither of them were hit. A a shotgun again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither of them were hit, but Ruben said he could feel the impact of the gun of the bullet hitting the car. Like it shook the car. 
Both of these incidences were within weeks of each other. And then it was no more than 12 days later that Daniel was dead. So the the breaking and entering, the drive-by shooting attempt, and then the murder of Daniel Yarbrough all happened within a month of each other. Um, they even had friends that, at first with the breaking and entering, the friends were like, hey, guys, a gang? I don't know about that. But then yeah. after the drive-by shooting attempt, that's when their friends started to be like, maybe you guys are on to something. Maybe there is a gang out to get you guys or something. Like, Yeah. A- Daniel could have swore that, like, Somebody's after me. I, I don't know what the hell is going on, but somebody is trying to take me. I out. mean, within two weeks, somebody breaks into your house and you get involved in a drive-by shooting and you're in the military where you go, yeah. I don't have like, I'm not, a, I don't have enemies. So of course you, I would feel paranoid very much so. You know, one yeah. time is, one thing is bad luck. Two things, you you can't help but start to question, especially when they're, it's not like uh, he got a flat tire. It's like these uh, people, people did this. So right. people did this to me again? Like, this is just two coincidences? They thought, so they broke yeah, into outside my, house. my home? Yeah, like they broke yeah. into my house, and then they shot me in my car. Starts to feel kind of personal. So invest- investigators did pursue the angle that Daniel's murder might have been gang-related, um, which is not a crazy theory. I mean, it's California. There was drive-bys, breaking and enterings involved, you know, criminal activity. It's not a crazy theory. But the pursuit gained zero traction. They could find no links to confirm that this was a possibility Mm -hmm. that this is what happened. Now, in the midst of this investigation, detectives got an unexpected call from Wesley Swank, the man who invited Daniel to Bible study the night of his murder. Swank informed detectives that a small piece of information had slipped his mind in the chaos of Daniel's murder. And he just wanted to mention it to him since he had failed to do it the first time that he was questioned. Right. The, the piece of information was that Daniel Yarbrough had recently made Wesley the beneficiary of his $250,000 life insurance policy. It just slipped his mind. So I, I just thought I'd tell you guys, I know you guys are really, you know, scoping around asking questions, and I, I don't know if it'll come up, but I am the beneficiary. I'm about to get 250 bands. So um, I don't know if that matters, but I thought, you know, I thought I'd bring it up to you guys. If, I mean, if you're going to bring it up, bring it up. Get ahead of it first then. question. Exactly. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't call tomorrow and be like, hey, man, hey, I forgot about letting you know this. Dad. He put me in. Oh, but, like, and the thing about it is Daniel went around asking friends, like, hey, man, would you. Yeah, what do you guys know about life insurance policies? Mom? Yeah. Or he, he asked the guy, he asked a guy that he used to work mm-hmm. with in the shop, like, would you want to be the beneficiary of my life insurance? The guy was like, nah, man, you should, as, the, as you should do it, as the guy was a as a good guy I was like nah man I don't want to make it a family member or whatever I don't I don't want to I don't want I don't I don't want to yeah. do that I don't want to sign up for that so yeah that's yeah. but I would assume that for something like this that he went and asked Swank I'm sure I I what I thought was that he asked he asked Swank before and Swank probably was like no sure and then you know we'll get into the rest of it at in this stuff he story, probably had I mentioned it to Swank at some point he did mention cuz yeah, he had mentioned he, it to other friends to and Wesley exactly. Swank and him and Daniel were close friends Right, they were like brothers, yeah. Yes. So, obviously, when you mention anything about life insurance policy when somebody's been murdered, uh, red flags went up immediately with the detectives. Uh, Swank agreed to a polygraph test, and the results came back inconclusive. The The polygrapher said that he didn't sense really any deception other than a couple of questions. He didn't really sense any de- any deception that would make him think that Daniel was li- that uh, Wesley was lying. Yeah. It, basically, so what he said was he felt more inclined to believe that Swank was telling the truth. Mm-hmm. So that made the red flags, you know, start to drop down. The red flags dropped even more as detectives started to go around and speak to others, uh, uh, more of Daniel's friends in the circle, now armed with this information about the uh, life insurance policy. Mm-hmm. And like Fran mentioned, one of his, spe- his friends specifically mentioned that, da- uh, that Daniel had spoken to him about a life insurance policy, and he told him, no, man, you should make that a family member. Like, that's the smart thing to do. Um. Uh, Two months went by with no progression in the case. Daniel's murder was on the verge of going cold. But another unexpected twist occurred when Daniel's aunt was uh, received in the mail a copy of the change of beneficiary form that switched Yarbrough's beneficiary from his sister, Fatisha mm-hmm. Oliphant, to Wesley Swank. One look at the form and Daniel's aunt declared that the signature on that form was a forgery. So now... First of all, the timing, the paperwork is just getting back. It's still in the mail Yeah. for the switching of the beneficiary. Then 
the, the, the beneficiary was his sister, and all of a sudden now it's Wesley Swank. Right. Now you're dead outside of a house that Wesley Swank told you to come to. Yep. So it's just not really looking good. At all. Yes. Uh, Swank was once again the primary suspect despite beating the polygraph test. Now it's like red flags back up again. But the investigators wanted to assure that the case was more airtight before making an arrest. Mm -hmm. So they felt like they had a lot, but they were like, we can get a little bit more. We got to make sure we got them dead to rights. So over the next four months, detectives were building a case against Wesley Swank. But this is when the investigation got another unexpected big break from a situation that initially seemed unrelated. In January 2015, a home burned down in a residential neighborhood. The home belonged to a family with a reputation of being awful, with everything from physical and sexual abuse to thievery and scamming on their resume of things that made them a super fucked up family. The head of this family tree was Richard J. Swank, a man who was serving a life term in prison plus 96 years for sexually abusing one of his sons for years. Yeah, because that should be in it. Yes, absolutely. Stealing ass. He also happens to be Wesley Swank's father. Wesley is one of 16 children. Mm. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, according to his sister, Melissa Anderson, the family grew up with nothing. They were on government assistance. And for some reason, her parents just kept having kids that yeah. not only could they not care for, but she says it didn't even s- seem like they wanted to care for them. No. Oh. You know, it was a house, a negligent house. The father's sexually abusing the kids. Like, th- but. As she went further on to, you know, um, explain, you almost get like a pay raise from exactly. when you're on government assistance. Yep. Every time you have Every a kid, child. you yep. get a little bit more money. So Cha-ching. it's like you have 16 kids. It's like, man, another 250 or whatever. Yep. I don't know the numbers, but I'm just saying. So it, <laughs> uh, you understand why you get to 16 kids. Yeah. And they might even hit them, which is this is crazy if this is true. The government, the government might have been like, you maxed out. Something. We can't tell you to stop having kids, but you can only, we can't, 16 is where you, you don't get any more money after 16 kids. And then they keep losing the money every time, and these people are losers, and they're stealing, and they don't have anything efficient, and they yeah. are living, they take suckling out the from anger. the teeth of the Uncle Sam. <laughs> they take out their anger and beat their kids. And they do that. A cycle of violence. Wow. 16 kids, man. If you do that in 2024, you might get a show on E. So basically, yeah, so Wesley Swank and his sister, uh, Melissa Anderson, and along with the other 14 siblings, grew up in absolute squalor and chaos and violence, and it was a terrible living. Um, But Melissa got away from her family as soon as she could. She joined the military and eventually settled down in Texas, although she did keep in touch with numerous siblings, which is crazy. Keeping in touch with 15 people is nuts. Yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of phone calls. So many people. phone calls and birthdays and <laughs> birthdays. Yeah. Oh my God. Then they have kids Years and, and all oh kinds my, of shit. Jesus yeah. Christ, man. No, thank you, man. Like cheaper by the dozen plus four. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Um. So yeah. So she eventually settled down in Texas, but kept in touch with her siblings. In fact, this is how she found out about the family house fire that I mentioned, and how she even heard the name Daniel Yarbrough. You see, when she was on a phone call with one of her siblings at uh, the day of the fire, you know, they're kind of doing popcorn calling around. Did you hear about the fire? The family house burned down. They call her. One of her siblings calls her and her her siblings kind of thinking out loud on the phone. And the sibling goes, I wonder if the fire had anything to do with Yarbrough. And Melissa goes, who's that? Yeah. And the, the sibling goes, oh, uh, never mind. No, don't worry about it. And quickly just kind of moves on from it and changes the subject. However... Melissa was like, what the fuck does that mean? And yeah. does a Google mean? search yeah. and got more information on who Daniel Yarbrough was and what had happened and how it happened outside of this house. And when she saw, when she looked up the article on and the information was the house that Daniel Yarbrough was killed outside of belonged to their brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. So then she, you know, her mind starts uh, swarming and, you know, kind of trying to put the dots together. And also according to Melissa, Wesley Swank, Although he, they all grew up in the same abusive house, Wesley was more like his parents. Yep. Like he didn't really disagree with the stuff that they were doing, and they kind of liked. He was a Sith Lord, basically. Like they were mad evil, and he was like, "Yo, that's tight. Hit him again." Yeah. And they were like, he "Huh?" Was the, he was the closest with the father. Yeah, like, huh? We like you. That's yeah. that's we like your energy. You want to hit him too? Like he was on that type of shit. Yeah. I'll hit him. He was telling on him. So like I said, when Melissa saw that the murder happened outside of the home of Thomas Bradshaw, who was their brother-in-law, she felt compelled to call 
uh, the the detectives, the detective on the case, and tell them that she suspected that her brother Wesley was a, at least partially responsible for the murder of Daniel Yarbrough. The detective agreed. He said, oh, yeah, girl, we know. As a matter of fact, would you mind uh, throwing on a little wire coming up from Texas and going to go vi- pay a little visit to your brother? Yeah. Which is crazy. Uh, imagine, like, every movie. I've never seen a movie that makes it not seem like the most terrifying proposition in the world to put on a wire and go to somebody's house and be like, Hey, man, I remember a couple weeks ago you were talking about how you murdered somebody. Can you go into that in extreme detail for me right now? <laughs> like, I don't know how you subtly, you know what I mean? Yeah. How do you subtly go uh, bring up, broach, broach a topic that somebody is, is a criminal activity and you just showed up, you haven't been home in a while? Yeah, I, I, I would assume that You have her on four being, sweaters. Yeah, I would assume that her being in the, in the, in the armed forces, if she's done any type of you know, elite training where it's like mm. you learn to keep calm and not make things look obvious. Cool under pressure. I think, yeah, I think that kind of played in her favor a little bit. But if just go, he's like, I haven't seen you in a while. So, and I, but I think that what happened gives you, gives her the pass of like showing up and being like, all right, what's. Yeah, the family house burned what, down. Right. What's. What, we got to let me tell me we what's gotta figure this out. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I think that they probably wasn't. If anything, Wesley Swink was like, well, even if she is wearing a wire. I doubt she's is because that's my sister, but I'm going to just tell her what I would tell the authorities. It's just like, I had nothing to do with it. I think it had something to do with gang related and just stuck with that story. Right. The idea that he, and, and, and the wire didn't really amount to much of anything. They didn't right. get like a confession yeah. from the, from the wire or anything like yeah. that. But the information that she came forward with connected some more dots and that gave them enough sure. probable cause to go and arrest him and bring him in for questioning. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, wearing a wire has got to be nerve wracking. Anybody out here listening to this, if you've ever worn a wire, please send in an email to affirmative murder at gmail.com. We would crazy. love to hear that story. That for would be sure. great for Tales from the Hood, which again, affirmative murder at gmail.com. Get those in if you, and especially if you have a wearing a wire story. Because that is juicy. Or you're just guys. walking around wearing a wire. You might just wear a wire. Just trying yeah, if you're just a snitch, like you just you, teeth you, you work for the HOA or something, and you're trying to get people kicked out of the neighborhood, and you just catch them on. Hey, so how tall is your fence? Because you know it's only supposed to be seven feet, but it looks like it's about nine and a half. And they go, yeah, well, it is nine and a half. Gotcha. You're tearing it down, <laughs> bringing it up at the next meeting. You need to take two and a half yeah. feet off your fence by the end of the month, or you're out of the neighborhood. Fuck HOA. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you meant that. I really did. <laughs> that was that was deep down in my soul. I I can't stand them. So it's all it's all a scam, like the emissions. It's all a fucking scam. They ain't gonna tell me what I'm, how my house supposed to look. I pay for it. <laughs> Fuck you. It's my house. <laughs> it's my house. Don't tell me what my house. I can't to paint like. my door yellow. Who the hell are you? Yeah. I bought this door. All right. I'm gonna try to tell me I can't keep trash. I'll keep trash in front of my house if I want to. <laughs> So anyway, so anyway, with a sufficient pile of evidence gathered, Wesley Swank was arrested and taken into custody. During an extensive interroga- during an extensive interrogation, he confessed to that his younger brother Logan was the trigger man. So yeah. immediately folded this whole family folds on each other. It's crazy. Um, so he immediately, well, he didn't immediately. I guess extensive. He had, he was he was in the interrogation room for a few hours. You know, I'll give him that. You know, a they started. No. It was applying the hours. pressure a little bit. It wasn't a few hours, like eleven <laughs> hours, and that's the patience I don't have. I go like, man, I want to go home, man. Yeah. We know you did it. Just come, <laughs> uh, just come on, shit. I don't be here. Are you telling this bullshit lie? We know you're lying, man. You know you, you know you're lying. Your head palms in here sweating. Your knee is shaking. Your foot. Let's go, man. You got I, your whole I, I body in your go. shirt. They always got their whole body in the shirt. You got yeah. your knees in your shirt. Your arms knee. in your shirt. They got that clock on extra loud. <laughs> I love interrogation videos. They come in because it's the way that they. It, it, but that one looked kind of. That one was kind of crazy though. I didn't he see was, it though. You didn't. You didn't see. The I only clip? saw. I only saw a, a split second of it. But what, what was what was what looked crazy well, about it? I get the tactic that the detectives tried to use was like comforting and and being yeah. understanding. You know where you're coming from and what they're going through at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, f- mentally and physically was like. But this one was like. The detective is sitting in the chair, one of these little rolly chairs, and get close to him and like, as in like front of his knees, uh huh, and like his hand is on the other guy's thigh, like, and I understand. I was like, he's getting right. a little intimate in here. Get, yeah, it's like this is way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, he probably like 
aggressive yeah, a little bit. Right? You're not supposed to be straddling yeah. me. I'm not Man, getting a haircut. Like grabbing his thigh. I said, no, this is crazy. Yeah. I said, no, he's... <laughs> I, I get it, but I mean, like, this, he was, he was way too close for, like, just trying to get this yeah. dude just to come up with the come truth. On, come on, like, tell, me, tell me. I tell understand, me. man. Hands tell on his thighs. And Whispering. Yeah. His lips touching his ear. Tell me. I said this. Tell me about it. <laughs> That's one way to get a confession, for sure. For sure, for sure. Uh, <laughs> back the fuck up. Yeah, yeah like, hey, man, hey, I'll tell you. Can you <laughs> give me five you. feet? Like, I, <laughs> like, Damn. Is that Creed? You got Creed cologne? I can smell your cologne. You need to give me, you need to give me five feet. I will, I will confess. <laughs> I will confess. Yeah, damn. Which he did. He confessed to his logo. His, he For confessed sure, to his yeah. Logan, his brother Logan Swank being the trigger man. Logan Swank was arrested in San Antonio, Texas, yeah. and Bradshaw, the brother-in-law, was charged with acting as the getaway driver in the murder. Also, Logan, this guy who was a nutcase, and because they they. They mentioned that they grew up, right? They grew up in not having, yeah, not having money. terrible circumstances. So like, yeah, right. So this money was like, if we get, if we do this clean, you know, we up, essentially. We mm-hmm. up. And Logan was like, he was, he was the, he was the, um, the wild card, or he was the unhinged one. He was like, oh, I'll kill somebody in a heartbeat. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't even think about it. Like he was like, oh no, I'll, I'll kill him. If you don't want to yeah. understand your friend, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'm more than happy to do it. Logan's dream was to be a hitman. He wanted to I be a hitman. I didn't know this at all. He wanted to be a hitman, and this was the perfect opportunity to live out this this dream of like his audition, taking somebody out for a check. I don't know, you know, whatever. But yeah, Logan wanted to be a hitman. That's why he had no issue with doing this. He was like, "Oh man, I get the opportunity to to live out this." Yeah, and Swank winning st- the first couple times, Swank stole a, stole a shotgun from the base. It was, first, a, for the first it was a military uh, the, registered weapon? Yeah, from the first That's year. really dumb. Yeah. And then the second time, uh, Swank took a gun from a friend and like mm. used it. It was like, oh, we're going hunting and then ended up giving it back to the guy. But before, before the robbery, Swank and Logan set Daniel up. Before the robbery. What do you mean? They set him up. So what happened was Wesley set up an email, a fake email to meet Daniel to buy some um, workout supplements. Okay. Like, Let's meet and whatever. As a, fa- so as, a can, as a made as up a person. Fake, as a made up person. And they went, waited him and Daniel. I mean. Uh, him and uh, Logan. Wesley and Wesley and Logan waited till Daniel showed up. And they shot at Daniel then the first time, but they missed. And that, and then that, and that's how they found out. That's when the rob, that's when the burg, that's when the burglary came and that's when the drive by shooting came. Oh, so, so there that, was, yeah, da- yeah, man, Daniel must have been living a paranoid life, man. For sure, for sure. Like, damn, I, didn't I, got know, I didn't know that one. Yeah, yeah. I just yep. coming because that, that, that came up. That came up later after they after they did after they did the investigation where he was like, oh yeah, he was shot at. We shot him the first time. We set him up the first time. That was before the. Yeah, we've been trying to do this for a while. Yeah, man. Damn, that's crazy. No, yep. see, man, that's why I don't do. I remember doing during uh, COVID. You. We're trying to get me an Xbox. <laughs> the hoops that we had to go through. That's funny. I was almost certain one of those times I was going to get murdered. Yeah. You're like, yo, no, just drive. You were the, you were the, in, you were the, in, the go between yeah. with me and, and I don't know some dude. You know, yo, go, just go meet him in this parking lot with a wad of cash. <laughs> I don't buy stuff <laughs> online anymore, bro. I, showing up in a parking lot. To get something and no receipts and no store, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm done. That was that was the closest. The crazy th- yeah, I've done that so many times. <laughs> I remember one time I did it. I bought a Nintendo, and so I didn't even tell Steph what the fuck I was doing. I went and bought it. <laughs> didn't even and tell you. <laughs> didn't even tell anybody. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even tell anybody. I went and met this guy in the parking lot. The crazy thing is, like, I didn't know the guy, but I seen him. He lived around it. We lived around the way. I mean, that's right. No excuse you know his face. Still, I know his right. face. I knew his car, so I've seen it before. And I went and met him in the, in the parking lot and, and bought the game. And then I told stuff. She's like, "Why wouldn't you tell me?" You I said, "I don't. I don't need it. because I'm not even. I didn't think of that possibility at yeah. all. Not at all. Did that come across my mind? I was like, somebody can like rob me and kill me. I just. I swear to you, I that did not come across. I'm like, I'm about to buy Ooh, Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch. It's a great deal. Play and Pokemon I Smash Brothers. Play Smash Brothers right. tonight. Yeah. I did not have that thought of my head was like so this can go complete completely left and nobody and knows that i'm and here i didn't even tell anybody where the hell am i at and nothing like that so yeah that's crazy man that's a wild one 
Yeah. But um, in exchange for his testimony, Bradshaw pleaded no contest to a minor charge of permitting another to shoot from a vehicle, which is. Yeah. I don't know how I guess in exchange for his testimony. I know that's not a made up crime, but that's a drive by shooting and you are complicit in an attempted murder to change sure. it to to change it to like, hey, man, almost like you remember in eight mile. When's the last time you seen eight mile? It's been a while. No, I saw it like two months ago. I've never seen it. Okay. Remember they were driving around shooting people with a paintball gun? Yeah. I guess in my mind, that's that. Like, there's no jeopardy of death on the line. If you're going, going about shooting signs or something, if you're going, you're shooting a gun from your car, but like not with the intention of killing somebody, like you're just, that's dangerous. And you're the driver who's allowing that to happen. I guess that makes sense. But if the whole agreement is, yeah, we're about to go kill somebody, and then you're driving the car after somebody murders somebody, that's a cra- like I don't know what in what other circumstances that charge a minor charge like well, this yeah, was a murder right, but but once you go but what but once you go once you plead no contest is like you you're saying like oh I didn't aren't you saying I didn't I, no I'm contest not, is like I'm not admitting guilt I'm not admitting but you guilt, got me but, or something like right something, exactly yes, yeah. yeah 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 so I think that's what he did though so it was like which again it is not it's not a it's, I don't see how that's a minor charge yeah so I, but still I was like that's, that's yeah I think point. but that's in, in my mind I'm like in exchange for his testimony they're like we're gonna give you this charge but then you're, you're gonna plead no contest to it so it's not it's gonna be way less than if it was a manslaughter or second degree murder right, so you're gonna right. get some jail time because you did do something bad but you're gonna plead no contest to this way lesser crime and end up getting a thousand and ninety four days in prison yeah. of which he served half yep so he's free that's cool. um he's yeah just you just as liable as everybody else. Yeah, I matter. mean, you agreed. You were a part of the plan. Like whenever they were having their meetings at Panera Bread or in at Bible study or whatever, you were there. Yeah. When like so then okay so uh, Bradshaw they were dirtbags so it definitely wasn't at Panera. Bread. It wasn't at Panera Bread. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 sorry, <laughs> it's probably more like a, at a at a Quiznos or at a um, at a Quiznos at a Little Caesars Pizza. Yeah. Does, does Little Caesars Pizza have Little like Caesar's a sit down yeah. area or is it like a you walk in? You just, I it's don't just think a so. counter. It, I don't think so, man. I think they may have they may get, have like a little stool. Yeah, get this and get the fuck out. You can eat it in the yeah. they have like three stools in the window. Like if you yeah. want to be a super dirtbag and eat a <laughs> box of pizza on a ledge on a stool while everybody can see you in the window, yeah. that's all we have. We don't have tables here. Get yeah. the pizza and get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> What's the dirtbag version of Panera Bread? The dirtbag version of Panera Bread would be a CC's pizza? Uh, some kind Ugh. of buffet, right? Like a Golden Corral or... Well, Panera Bread is not a buffet, though. No, but I'm trying to think of where um, would you have a meeting about a hit? About a hit? A dirt, as a dirtbag, 16 kids. At like a probably hibachi uh, fucking... A hibachi restaurant? A hibachi fucking... Uh, <laughs> you get the shrimp you tossed eat? <laughs> Getting the shrimp tossed in your mouth while you're talking about a hit? No, I mean like an all-you-can-eat hibachi. Oh, a hibachi buffet. Yeah, a hibachi buffet. I'm going to go with Panda Express. Pan Express is good, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, nobody says it's not good, but it's definitely not a, a nice lunch where people go to do their college ho- homework or anything like that. It's not people posted up in uh, uh, Pan Express Bell. with they go laptops. To Taco Bell. No, they go to Taco Bell and do their, uh, their meetings. Fair. I'll take Taco Bell. Taco, Taco Bell, Bell is the dirtbag Panera Bread. I'll, I'll, For sure. I'll go with that. Yeah, because you can get a salad from Taco Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Yeah, Taco Bell is the dirtbag Panera Bread. Yeah, get you. Cool, yeah, you yeah, quicker yeah. than that. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're moving on. Yeah, yeah. Taco Bell. So, uh, <laughs> um, in separate trials in 2015 and 2016, respectively, Logan Swank and Wesley Swank, who was regarded as the mastermind of the crime, obviously, yeah. uh, because he knew him and it was, it was his whole plan. He was the person, the the beneficiary of the yeah. insurance. Oh, it, yeah. Real quick, also, if. If a murder happens and you leave the state, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you look a little. You bad. look super. Gu- you look you, you super look guilty, little, man. You look a little bad. You just leave. Yeah, you look. All of a sudden, you just leave. Come yeah, on, you man. Look, you, you can't look, just. You look pretty nuts, bad. Man. You look. You look pretty bad, man. Like, why did you move to Texas? Oh, yeah, no. you, yeah. I don't know. Just want to change the scenery. <laughs> change uh, the scenery. <laughs> I kept that murder. Yeah. Oh, I'm an man. outlaw. Um, so did you know? Did you see how they caught him? Though how they caught Logan? Though no. Did you see that? Mm-mm. So. They had Wesley in the interrogation room, and he was like, "Hey, man, look, we know we know Logan is out of the state. They made him shoot a video of of Wesley going, "Hey, man, I'm here. I wish I had the clip. I should have fucking." He said, "I'm here, and they got me, and I told him everything that happened. Just turn yourself in. I love you. You're my brother, but 
But I dropped in. dime. Yeah, I, I snitch. <laughs> Turn yourself in. And he shot a video, which looks humiliating. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. That's just crazy. I, iPhone, couldn't hold, I couldn't hold face. water at all, bro. I yeah, and just sitting in the chair and just like look at the camera and just like a cop is just holding his phone up to your face and you just yeah, like, that's cra- hey, hey man, man hey, turn bro, yourself they in. They caught me. He's he's still <laughs> hiding in another state. Hey bro, they got us. No, they got you. <laughs> and then you send that text. No, that's crazy. And then you know they're like, what, what the fuck, fuck is going? What the fuck is going on? What is this? Oh, like, this has to be a, this has to be a prank. This has to be a a bit. <laughs> no, it's like, if I get caught, we got caught. No, we got caught. What are you talking about? We all going down. If I if I got caught, we got caught, man. Hey, come out from the dumpster. You come out from behind uh that car right there. You take that wig off, bro. They got us all. They got us, man. Damn. So that's what his brother did. I didn't know he sent the video. Like, oh, hey, man. I should have I should have clipped that. Damn. <laughs> they they turned that's us bad. in, bro. Oh, you, yeah. you they had the video on the thing you saw? Like the actual video? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> Them holding the camera in his face, all up in his face. Yeah, man. Oh, that's crazy. No, we can we can we can we can put it up. We can put it up when that Yeah, put it up on the uh, Facebook or something. I, I I need that. Send that to me. Um but uh, yeah, man, both the men responsible for the murder of Daniel Yarbrough were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. And yep. the getaway driver was sentenced to 1,094 days, which he served half of and is free. So that was justice in a sense. Um, Daniel's yep. family described him as a guy that would help anybody. He was a he was a very nice guy, soft spoken but fun. Um and it's really crazy, bro, what money will make people do. I mean, yeah, man. You know, and and a the friend. way that they described them, Wesley Swank and Daniel Yarbrough being fr- like they were friends. Brothers. Yeah. You know, like and as soon as he got a whiff of Daniel being like, "Yeah, I think I'm going to take a life insurance policy out to be safe." His wheels immediately started turning into how I can I get away with murdering my friend. Crazy. And then to bring Bible study into it is nasty. It's nasty work. Yeah, so also Daniel's uh, life insurance is tied up in legal proceedings. Wow. And has yet to be paid paid out to, you know. So the insurance company the gets over once again. For for now, for the time being. Yeah, for now, yeah. Yeah. But they got to, but it's one of those things where, like, they can wait. They can wait as Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, we'll they pay can this out to your great, this great grand yep. cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Litigation, man. Um, but yeah, that was the story of Daniel Yarbrough. Absolutely wild, fucking man, schemy, heisty murder from a sick guy. Yeah, man. I mean, like two fifty. Keep it a I'm buck. Not, I mean, I'm that's not, not even a lot of money. I'm not. Yeah, and I don't want to make it sound like I'm like. There's no. That's mo- not there's worth no it. But like, yeah, there's no price. There is no. There is no price of. But like, but it ain't two hundred fifty thousand dollars. It ain't two hundred fifty thousand. There is no price. Let's but it clear. ain't two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Let's be clear. You know, let's be clear. Let's, let's hey, let's be clear. There's be no clear. price to take a life. No but price. it ain't two hundred fifty thousand. But it ain't two fifty. It ain't two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Um, absolutely tragic, man. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, you know that that, that was our affirmative murder of Daniel Yarbrough yeah, from a uh, friend. Um, the yeah. floor. Before we the get floor. out of here, let's, let's get, let's get out of here. You know, before we before we get out of here, I know you. You know, you now said you went on the. Full binge with the family. Full binge. Um, Rob Lowe also. People really Rob came Lowe. at me about that. I I, 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 I couldn't find his last name last week. You know, I, I knew it, but I didn't want to humiliate myself. So right. I let, I, let, I, let it, I let it go. I was like, I'm going to let him Yeah, this right, right, right. Um, but, um, yeah, man, it was one of those, it's, it's, it's one of those shows where, like, everybody has their, you know, different personalities or whatever. But there's some people in there, I was like, get this motherfucker. <laughs> Can't stand you. Because I... Uh, you get on my nerves. Yeah. They get all like, yes, go home. <laughs> you don't get a chance. But then with some people, I go like, that's my guy. He looks like an awesome guy. Yeah. I fuck with him. Yes. I fuck with her. Mm-hmm. Great show, man. I love the show. I need I to be show. on the show. I need to find a way to get on the show. For um, sure, man. I need, to be um, a, I need to be a contestant on the floor. I would love to do that. I show. will use every... Anybody listening to the, any connection that I have in the world, possibly, if you are a, a talent scout, if you are a, an, an executive producer on on on, the, I, I please, I am a charismatic guy. I'd be a great contestant on the floor. Please, I need to be on the floor, bro. Yeah, you telling me I you don't? I think I would do good on the floor, bro. I think I could at I least win would, a night. Yeah, for sure. And that's all I want. For sure. I think I can get a lead early. With like four squares, win a night, and I'm happy. Come yeah. home with twenty grand, I'm cool with that. I don't need to win the whole thing. Yeah, 
The only problems I would have on that show would be, obviously, actors and movies. I wouldn't. That's not a strong suit. Sure. And vacation tourist tourist spots. I wouldn't. Oh, it gets bad though, man. One of them was birds. Yeah. I know like six birds, and then after that, they started getting yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like drunk drool shit was easy. Cars was easy. Yeah. Bathroom and, items. Uh, yeah. Bathroom items was easy. It was called, uh um, one of them was um. It's 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 crazy to see how somebody like oh this is my expertise yeah but then get dealt with by somebody else who get like, destroyed you know, and get destroyed was like you, you picked said this. that you yeah you picked that yeah, you said you was the uh, <laughs> medical uh, whatever it uh-huh. is but you got destroyed you get murdered some of the shit I was like they said I was like I had no idea what that was yeah one of the guys was like famous hair I know all the hairs he didn't know any of them <laughs> he got destroyed yeah one of them was one that well one guy did sports equipment and like. One of them came up, I was like, I wouldn't have got that. One of them was like a birdie. It's called like a birdie. Yeah. It's the ball no. with the net. I thought that was called like uh, The racket ball, or whatever. Badminton. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was Bad, something else. The like, badminton oh, yeah, ball. I yeah. It was called like a birdie, though. They yeah. didn't say that. I said, no, I wouldn't have got that. I wouldn't. I would have been gone. I am addicted to the. F- I love no, it. I love I love the show for sure. It's such a good show, man. Um, yeah. but, uh, Again, before we get out of here, though, watch the floor. Um, not They're not they're not a sponsor. They're not paying us. It just we really have a passion for the floor. Um, the Freak Nick documentary is finally coming out this month. I think it's like March 22nd or 23rd or something like that. Fran, I think we should do a companion. If it's a multi-episode thing or if it's one, we should either do we watch it and talk about it on Patreon or we do an episode to episode thing. I don't know. But like if you go through our uh, podcast feed, we have a two part uh, podcast on the the history of Freak Nick. It was uh, absolutely um, a fun diving into that. Um, talking about it it was really interesting and then it took a twist that got kind of dark and there's a documentary coming out about it um this month which is march i think like late march march 20th something like that um so i'm really excited for that to come out freak nick the documentary is coming out on hulu and i think we got to do something yeah for sure yeah for that also in yeah. may there's a documentary about black twitter coming out super Ooh, excited about okay. this as well um i cannot wait i think this is may 6th or something like that i'm so excited for a black Twitter documentary, it is some of the best moments in pop culture have, have been stemmed from a night on black Twitter. Um, the whole Popeye's chicken sandwich moment debacle, it, whatever that was, they got Popeye's got a billion dollars in free marketing from black Twitter. It, yeah. it, it, it needs to it be studied me and I'm glad it's being studied. Um, so many moments from black Twitter that I can't wait to see I know that. documented on a on a on a on a documentary series. I'm super excited about those. Those are those, those are two documentaries that are coming out that I'm super excited about. Again, speaking of May, May 4th, 2024, Fran, me, Madison McGee, we will be in Portland, Oregon at The Growler Guys. Um uh super excited to go and check that place out, Portland, I mean. And have a good show for you guys. We're really excited about that. Um, hope you guys can attend. The links are available now. Tickets are available now. They are selling very well. Super excited. Hope to have you guys there uh, for a night of fun. Um, thank you to anybody who's bought a ticket the first day. Uh, we are still in the early bird stages, so get a ticket for a lower price before the prices go up. Uh, yeah, man. Anything else? Got anything else? Nah, man. Um, just excited for the show. Got that coming up. We got Crime Con coming up. Crime Con it's coming up. Nice yes. little, it's a nice little stretch of some cool things we got going on. Yeah, it's going to be some fun sure. times coming up in the spring. Um, yeah. A lot of announcements, a lot of fun things. Super excited to uh, for this year. So let's keep it going. May 4th and also Crime Con. We'll have more details on that soon. But yes, May is going to be a fun month. Uh, anyway, I've been Alvin Williams, joined as always by my partner in true crime, Francel Evans. And we'll see you guys next week. Deuces.